Hey folks, I'm Dieter Malhorn. In this video, I'm going to show you two things that every fisherman needs to know when they get a new fishing reel. All right, folks, if you're like me, you love to get a new fishing reel. Now, I do know that some of you buy more fishing reels than you actually need, but that's okay. The tackle industry thanks you. Uh, but when you get a new fishing reel, uh, there's something you got to do, and that is put fishing line on it. Uh, I've got a lot of inquiries from people wondering how I put line on, what kind of knot I use so that uh, the line doesn't slip when it's on there. Well, I just did a video on this reel. It is the Carnivore from PC Fun. It's a spinning reel, and it's an alternative to the uh, more intimidating bait casters that you see me use in a lot of videos. People are interested in using these spinning reels. So I've been wanting to profile some, and the folks at PC Fun were nice enough to send me some to try out and show you guys. Now, I got this reel, I got to put line on it. And that's fairly simple, but before you do that, you've got to put a knot on that line to attach it to the spool. So those are the two things I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you one, how to put line onto one of these reels, but also going to show you how to tie a knot that won't slip. Now the line that I'm using is this Andy monofilament. It's 30 pound line. It is the high vis yellow that you see me use. Now, uh, this is probably a little bit bigger line than I actually need with this reel. Um, so you're probably asking yourself, well, why don't you use a smaller line? Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't have any here. I would probably be putting 20 pound line on this. Uh, I started using 30 pound a while back uh, when I started using planer bores more. I needed something a little bit thicker for the clip to bite onto. But what I'm gonna do to show you how to tie this knot, it's called the Arbor Knot. I'm going to use a piece of this uh, highly visible uh, line here. Uh, obviously, this is not the fishing line that you would be using, uh, but it's a lot more visibility to show you exactly what we're doing here. So pretend this is your fishing line. Now, obviously, this is going to be going onto the spool here. We're going to have to wrap that around that spool, pull it tight. So basically what I'm doing is we're going to take the line and we're going to tie just an overhand knot which is gonna look like this. I'm gonna tie it a little bit smaller so we don't have to cut it. But boom, you've got a knot there. Pretty simple, right? Pretty straightforward. Not that hard uh, to do that knot. I think we can all do that one. Then what we're gonna do, come around it like that. You're laid up over it. What you're gonna do is just make another overhand knot around this other piece so that it comes through like that. I'm going to untie that just to show you what you got here again. Got this overhand knot here on the end. What you can do is you're going to come around it like that. See that's laid across it just like that. And you're going to come around and underneath like that. Basically made a little loop around it and then back through that little hole right there. Boom. Up. Oh, slip like that. So it's laid up there, pow, just like that. I'll show you one more time. Make sure you see this. I'll be honest, I take for granted that people know how to tie these knots, so that is why I'm doing some of these videos to take the time to show you guys. Again, you have that knot on the end, come across it like that, come back through like that, and back through that loop. Boom. Now what that's going to do is, as you pull this tight, it'll get to a point it won't get much tighter and it will pull this up in there. So I'll go ahead and get that a little bit snugger. There we go. What we're going to do is, with the bail open, that is this, this little thing right here, have that open. And one thing that's going to be important to not forget is to close it. You're going to loop it around there, and if you look in there, right there in the center, on this one, there's some little soft treaded rubber. Uh, that's a very good little add-on that they put on here. If you don't have that, take a piece of two-way tape. It doesn't have to be big, just a small piece, or a piece of electrical tape turned around backwards so the sticky side's out, and put it on there. It gives this line something to bite onto, and it helps keep it from spinning when it's on there. Put that around there, keep it lined up on that sex, that center section. Pow, that is on there. And now you're ready. Flip your bell over. 
and you are ready to spool line onto here. I'm gonna go through the entire process one more time. Easy not to do. Great way to keep your knot from slipping. You're starting with a piece of line just like that. You're just gonna make you an overhand knot in it. After you're doing this with fishing line, you got a big old piece, cut it up kind of snug like that one is. Then again, you're gonna come around, lay that across there, 90 degrees, just like that. You're gonna come underneath it, and then back through it. Boom, just like that. So that's what you got. And you'll just pull that down tight, just put that onto your spool, and you're ready to load the line on. As you can see, it tightens up as it gets down on there, and it's ready to go. All right, guys, this is actually with the monofilament line. I know this stuff is a little bit harder to see. First thing you can do is make that overhand knot, boom, through there like that. Now on this, I will trim off that little tag end that's sitting there. Then we're gonna make the overhand knot loop back through there, poof. And that's gonna be sitting there just like that. Don't worry about this end sticking off. You want that knot on there. Put it onto the spool. Like I said, this is uh, easy to do on a spinning reel. A little bit harder to do on a bait caster reel. You have to wrap it around it before you get it on there. As you can see, that knot is just gonna slip, slip, slip until it gets to that first knot and that's what locks it in. Again, do this with your bail open. It makes it much easier. Flip it. And then you're ready to spool the line onto the reel. All right, guys, now for illustration purposes, I put this on a little short butt of a rod here. Uh, ideally, put it on the rod, uh, your actual spinning rod, it will help. But uh, I've got it on here mainly for illustration purposes. And what I'm doing is I've got uh, my spool mounted up over here on, a, uh, on actually the tripod leg of the uh, camera that is actually recording me. Uh, doing all this for illustration purposes, and I'm coming off the top of the reel. This is a lot easier to do. I mean, the noise is from it coming off the spool. A lot easier to do uh, in a setting that is, well, not like this. It's a lot easier to do with a rod and reel in your house. It's a lot easier to do with a regular rod. But keeping some tension on it helps wind it on tight. I'm noticing I'm getting actually a good bit of resistance just where it's coming off of the spool. Actually, the faster I wind it, the uh, more resistance I'm getting. So actually it's working out pretty good. Now, how much line do you put onto a spool? Well, generally speaking, I try to keep it in that range right there, there's a little beveled edge on this reel where it starts to roll off. I try to keep it just short of that. That's plenty of line there. I'm gonna cut it right here, mount it to my rod. I'll pull off a little bit of this line that's on here and I will be ready to fish, guys. That's really all there is to it. One more tip is um, you'll notice when I was spooling it on, it was coming off the top of the spool. Another piece of advice, uh, that's usually a good thing to do. Uh, it helps reduce how much line twist that you get going on. Uh, sometimes you don't have a way to hold a spool like that. Uh, so then when you are taking it off the top of the spool, say the spool is sitting on the floor, you want it coming off of the spool in the same direction that it is going on to your reel. That again will help with uh, cutting down on how much line twist you get. So that's it for now, folks. Go put one on the bank and put one in the boat. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. Uh, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.